The name's Gambit, on a me. Remember it. It's too soon, guys. It's way too soon. I'm sorry to remind you of what happened, but... We have to mourn the loss of one great X-Men character. And with that, I'm going to bring out my guests so we could pay tribute to one of the most fun and exciting X-Men of the 90s. So with that, let's welcome him into the party, guys. It's too soon, man. It's too it's, soon. I know, man. It's so rough, man. Why? Why did they have to do that? Why? My, my, my therapist, Doc Sampson, says it's going to be okay. I have to process this. You got to process it, man. I'm going to talk to my lawyer, Jennifer. Um, She's good at this kind of stuff. So, you know, we're going to have to talk to the folks over at um 
Disney and be like, why did you do what you did? But with that said, it's time to say what's up to the chat. So as always, kicking it off is our boy Las Cruces, who came in at 1024 a.m. Eastern time. And I know for a fact that Las Cruces is over at New Mexico. So that means it was earlier for him. <laughs> but he came back about an hour later saying hooray with a woohoo. And of course, hello from New Mexico. <laughs> and somebody who's omnipresent right now is has some. Well, I play with me. So, what does that mean? Yeah. Good afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Good evening over here. You know, it's it's six thirty over here, so it's evening over here. But as always, guys, Gambit would appreciate it if you would kindly slap that like. Miss Miss Ami, Miss Ami, Miss Ami, Mona I, I I'm used to Mona Ami, so sending his love from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Our boy Scott Vaughn, who's gonna have a great show. He wasn't sure if he was gonna do a show today or not, but the show is happening. And what's up, Stephen C, comic fam? There you go. Hashtag Team Gambit for life. Hashtag Find Josh. We're gonna find Josh. I promise you. We're going to find Josh. How do we not know that Josh is out trying to find a way to save Gambit? Hey, he's doing what he can in the woods. You know what I'm saying? We got Joe. Oh, quick. Quant oh, you. Oh, my goodness. Joe, that's it. That's it. It's over. I thought we were cool. You're done, boy. Well, look at that. We got to thank you from Taylor. Winter, <laughs> but then you ended up with your quads. Well, I gave you the spoiler warning. I gave you the spoiler, spoiler warning. And by this time. It's been how many days now? It's been since Wednesday. The news has been out. All right. What's up, Collecting with Durs? Look look at these pimps and legends, right? Evening, y'all. <laughs> Let me see if I can get his name. Zaromsky Pulp Media. If I got it wrong, I'm sorry. But I didn't get Joffrey Costa wrong. It's Izzy time, right? Right? Sorting books for my whatnot sale. <laughs> What's up, Comic Embrace? What's up, Rats? Steve White. Happy Monday, Comic Family. And again, just like he said, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Consider joining the Izzyverse. And my boy Roscoe, what a what a week he had last week. Having David Nakayama in the show. That was cool. So yeah. Right? So today it's gonna be all about trending comics but i don't want you to forget one thing the name is garbage remember it yep <laughs> that's right oh that's right yeah we did see you on king kong what's up yeah that was a great show so yep let's go ahead man we're gonna talk about what's trending man let's talk about what's trending because we're gonna be talking a little bit about some gambit love it's definitely gonna be some talk about gambit we're gonna be talking about what's trending what's new so let's get on with it man let the show begin <laughs> Wait up. <laughs> Look at this one. Sorry, yeah, you guys. Is. The loss of Gambit is such a terrible tragedy. We all know Rogue's heart will move on. Wow, dude. Seriously? I mean, yeah, sure. There was that one time she left him in Antarctica, but you know, he wanted to be left. But but you know what? He lo he loves he loves his rogue, man. Just yeah. just look. Be brave, Shell. Gambit never said. That's right. But, yeah. But I'm pretty sure Gamer has said that to other people before. <laughs> <laughs> Quite possibly. Oh wow. I'm sure he said that to Belladonna. <laughs> Dropped to the floor. Yeah, Magneto ain't dead. Let's just say that much. But he took a dirt nap. Oh, that's cold. Anyway, let's go ahead and start talking a little bit about what's nah. trending. Um, let's we, we're gonna start off with Fantastic Four. This is life story number one. This book actually was in the list a little while back, a couple of weeks back. And the re big reason why this book's on this list is because of the Fantastic Four movie. More importantly, it's up on the list simply because they're telling us to read this. 
Yeah. Right? So you, there was this whole thing where it says, read these books. The Coming of Galactus, which is very shocking to me. So it tells you to read Fantastic Four 1, and it tells you to, to read the three-issue arc of The Coming of Galactus from 48, 49, 50. But it also tells us to read Life Story. And don't is, stop. As I was gonna say, don't stop with issue one. Read the whole series because it was yeah, pretty good. Yeah, so it's and the whole series is pretty cool because it's taking the Fantastic Four through different generations, right? So through every decade. So it's a pretty cool story. Um, I picked up my copy a little while back, so I'm really happy to see this book here. It's still relatively cheap, guys. So if yeah. you find this in the wall, it's a very inexpensive book. You know, you you don't don't overspend on a book like this. It's I don't think it has a high print run, but still, it wasn't a book that had a lot of traction when it first came out. As though most Fantastic Four books are. Let's face it, it unless it's the Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, and John Byrne run, no one really cared about Fantastic Four. I'm being honest. All right, all right. Next book in our list. All right. It's Uncanny X Men 227. Now, this one is obviously X Men spec, of course, because of the TV show. But it marks the first appearance of the adversary in his in his true form. Talk to me a little bit about the adversary, Tony. I know you. I think you know a little bit more about the adversary than I do. Not as much. I just know that he was originally one of Forge's native. I think it was a Cheyenne mystic that was like friends with forge because he first appeared under the name of Nas or nays or something like that in 184 yeah. and what's interesting about this one if you if you allow me to elaborate go for it we see the x-men die in this issue and get resurrected by roma and this would start with this issue was a nice little trend where the x-men couldn't be recorded or photographed on cameras you know you could see them but if anybody tried to film them or anything, it wouldn't take. It's mm -hmm. kind of like you know, yeah. vampires and mirrors, which mm -hmm. made a great play in a Spider-Man story for Marvel Comics Presents, where he sees this guy dressed up like Wolverine, and he thought that it was an imposter, and he attacked him because he thought you know that Wolverine was dead. Mm, interesting. Now with this one here, we're going to see the adversary. We did see him in the previous episode, episode four. Mm -hmm. um, so there was it's part of the life story episode, which we'll see that book come back. Uh, but this is his first appearance. Again, another book that don't overspend. Fall of the Mutants, I do remember when it came out. It was when I started collecting comics is when Fall of the Mutants yeah. came out. And I know there's a lot of copies. Oh, yeah. And it's it's Mark, it's Mark Silvestri, man. Mark Silvestri, goodness, man. What's going a, on? That is a badass cover, too. Yeah, he, he, was, he was the man back then. All right. Our next book is something that I actually am thrilled about. And that is Star Wars Dawn of Jedi Force Storm. This is one of the latter Dark Horse comics that came out I'm not, I'm back in 2012. And this is the time where Star Wars was being acquired by Disney. But Dark Horse still had the license to, to produce Star Wars comics. So they kind of like, sh sh they just kept doing them. Yeah. Kind of like, oh no, before we, before we lose this license. And to be honest, they're still doing them even to this day. So they didn't really lose the license. But the, the importance about this book is that this is set in years, I mean, hundreds of years before the Skywalker story, the Skywalker yeah. story. And this is pretty much the beginning of the Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. So really cool book. And now why is that important here? Again, there are rumors that we are going to get a new Star Wars trilogy. And this one is going to be done by... James Mango, who did um, who just did who did Logan, and he what what did what else he Ford versus Ferrari he did Wolverine, so he is he is planted to do a Star Wars movie, and they are saying that his Star Wars movie will happen at the beginning of the Jedi, yeah. so people are going to this book for that. I'll admit, until I seen it pop up on the trend in twenty, I'd never heard of it. But I am interested. I'd like to read it. Yeah, eighty dollar high for this book. I mean, it, it's it's pretty costly right now. So, but if you look at the orders, eighteen thousand. That's fairly modest. Yeah. For for comics. So. All right, our next book here. This is this is a book that <laughs> if my boy, <laughs> if my boy Cliff. Was here right now. 
he'll be screaming, I got this, I got this, I got this book, here it is, I got this book. And that is Super Villain Team Up issue number five from Marvel Comics. This is the first appearance of The Shroud. <laughs> right, The Shroud. Why is The Shroud so important? Well, this is comic book spec, yeah. right? Are, are you familiar with The Shroud? Very vaguely. I heard of him. Ah, wait, wait, wait. Thank you. Well, I don't drink coffee, but you gave me $2 for a comic book? For that, man, you get some love. Thank you. Let's 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 see what kind of love we're going to give him. Yeah. There we go. Do that. So, what else is what's Joe? He's going back. Dark Horse actually did lose the rights when Disney bought Lucas. It ended up in two. Oh, okay. Thanks for thanks for sharing that. But they're still producing books today. Yeah. Like there's a new book coming out today, so I'm a little curious on how that's gonna work. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, look, I got a text message for a job offer. It's like I I wasn't looking for a job. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so the shroud is going to, is our new new moon night. Yeah. So that's that's the only thing. I don't think it's gonna last long. Of course, we're gonna get our marks factor back sooner or later, and stuff like that. But you know, I know I know Cliff was happy to to, to get this book. Yeah. It, it it is a very weird place for the for a character to first appear, right? Super villain team up the shroud. Um, I remember the Shroud, and I always connected him to Moon Knight anyway. Like I said, I wish I could say I remembered him. I might have read a couple books about him, but I just don't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, he, he, he's, he was a West Coast Avenger for a while. Not, nothing really crazy about him. I got Black Spiders in the house. What's going on, Black Spiders, my boy? Yeah, he was, like I said, he wasn't really... And even now, I don't think it's going to last long, so... Speaking of books that are lasting, we got here World of Wally. Okay. World of, and I said World of Wally because I'm thinking <laughs> Wallywood. <laughs> World of Wood, right? First of all, that title is crazy. <laughs> okay. I'm going in and out again. Here I go. All right. And there it goes. Of course, Comics by the Bay would show up. He loves wood. <laughs> well, this is this book here is again, it is hot because of Dave Stevens. The Dave Stevens effect is alive and well today. The, are, do you know anything about the Dave Stevens effect, Tony? I've been hearing about it in the videos, but I'm going to be honest with you. I honestly never knew who Dave Stevens was until I started seeing these videos about his resurgence. And I do know there's supposed to be some mm -hmm. documentary you can watch for free on YouTube about him. Yeah, it's already it's it's definitely already up already uh, from messing up last names to messing up first name. <laughs> it's true it's true actually because last week i called him dan stevens and dan stevens this guy who played legion so but this week it, it's the time but come on you gotta admit world of wood Wh wh what <laughs> like I, I i don't know what to say about it but i will say i do love dave stevens art He's a creator. He's the creator of the Rocketeer, and yeah. he has always been known for drawing good. Like they call him Good Girls, but he, he like he he does know how to draw the female anatomy really, really well. <laughs> yeah, as we will see very soon. But yes, I agree. Dave Stevens is awesome, and of course, it's like World of Warcraft, but with hot dogs. Gotta throw the hot dogs in there. Got to throw the hot dogs. All right. Our next book is, again, we, you mentioned, we talked a little bit about this character. So we have here Uncanny X-Men 188, the first cameo appearance of the adversary. So this is where we first get a glimpse of the adversary. Um, again, $3 book. I yeah. don't see it spiking much. This is going to be a dollar bin book at most. Yeah. You know? Hey, let's just cover them. At least there's not an argument over which one's a cameo and which one's the first appearance. I mean. Oh, gosh. Well, <laughs> a cameo to me is he gets one page the most. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> wow. Full appearances of the he's in the story. Or she. 
but we di- we we digress, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Speaking of cameos, Ultimate Universe number one. This features a cameo appearance of May Storm, as well as a cameo appearance of the Ultimate Black Panther. This is a book that's been hot for the last couple of weeks. We have a high sale of twelve dollars. Again, May Storm is. People are really excited about this Maystorm character, but we don't even know if she has powers yet. I'm assuming she will. <laughs> Probably so. I haven't read it. I haven't read issue two of Ultimate X-Men yet, but it's yeah. in the stack. Yeah. We got uh, Aurelis is in the house. What's going on, Aurelis? All right. So we got that going on. And here's a book that, you know what? I I personally love this book. I have the whole series. I have each issue as well as a trade of this book, and that is the Watchmen. What are your thoughts on Watchmen? Well, I love it. I have issue one. I just got it back from being cleaned and pressed. I'm fixing to have it submitted. I need to get the rest of the single issues. I have it in trade. First time I read it was in trade, and it I love it. I went, hell, dude, I went to the midnight showing of the Watchmen movie. I love. Oh, when it came back in the days when we used to do midnight showings, right? Remember those? Oh yeah, and I love the movie. And what's up, Council of Comics? I mean, I, I this was a really you know when I finally read this, I was like, wow, this is pretty badass. It, it is, and it's it, it's you know what some people say it hasn't aged well. It aged well, but some people don't understand how it aged because what at its time. It was groundbreaking for what it was doing, right? Oh, absolutely. And, and now you don't see it as groundbreaking as before because there's a, a lot of stuff that came after that's the same thing. So personally speaking, I love the Watchmen. I love its entirety. I read the story multiple times. I I have the book signed by Dave Gibbons. Do you, you know, and like I said, I had the whole series, so I do yeah. love it. Um, yeah. Oh, look at this. We got it. We got it confirmation powers were confirmed in ultimate expert thanks for the spoiler appreciate that taylor I was talking about spoilers earlier look he gives us a spoiler now yeah so mm-hmm. all right so again this is coming out because we're getting an animated feature of watchmen so there a few years ago they did they did a motion comic of watchmen yeah i remember that so i guess we don't call this animated anymore i don't know man <laughs> you know what i mean it's weird yeah Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh well. Moving on. So <laughs> now he's now he's back to learn to read. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, Taylor, you're the man. All right. Our next book here is Marvel Comics Presents 72. This is the first Weapon X storyline. I love the story. Um, I yeah. think it's great. You got Barry Winslow Smith in this story, which is amazing. And then you also have some side stories that go along with it. So. Why not? Yeah, it's a classic story, like you said. A great art. Mm-hmm. Barry Windsor Smith knocked it out of the park, and uh, yeah, this is one of my favorites. Yeah, you know what? It's time to stop for a second because I feel like we need to give some love where it goes, right? Yeah. What if I'd been lying about not being able to touch another human being? What if I could, if I wanted to? What's this supposed to mean to me? Come up to the rec room in five minutes and I'll show you. Mm, what's going on in the rec room? <laughs> Somebody's getting wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. It never ever go. Yeah, you can't go wrong with Barry Winslow. No, nah, man. Wait, I love this one. The side story sucks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so. Extra stories. Speaking of um, stories, you got here Uncanny X Men 300. This is 90s at his best, right? You yeah, got, absolutely. You got a cover by John Romina Jr. You got some Hall of Fours with a whole bunch of X Men logos. You got the introduction of the Legacy Virus. So people are out, people are trying to are grabbing this book because. They feel like the legacy virus is going to be a big a big turning point in the X Men cartoon. We did see Sinister provide the legacy virus to Baby Cable, so mm-hmm. people are trying to spec early. I don't know. I, I, I always thought that the virus he introduced might have been the techno organic virus, but we had that in the earlier 
in the early shows, so I don't know. Yeah. That may, may be right. Are you sure that was Morph? <laughs> mm. <laughs> What's up, Comic Cap Collectibles? Rick, my boy Rich. Rich has been doing a phenomenal job. I don't know, I don't know if you guys have been seeing it. He's been doing he he's been doing the videos, cleaning and pressing my books. So you can go check out that. There it is. Go look for it. Go check out. Go check out Rich's channel. Comic Caps Collectible. It's such a cool thing. The last book he did was my Warlock book. And it didn't come out as much as we wanted to, but we kind of expected it. Um, so go check that out. All right. Five dollars. If you find this for five dollars, do you pick it up? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, yeah, I've, I've, I bought it when it came off the racks, but yeah, I'd buy it again. Yeah. If I could get it for five bucks. Five bucks? Why not? It's a dollar bin book. All right. Shiny. Very shiny. All right. Back to some Dave Stevens with Alien Worlds. Number two, this book is going for $30. Another one of his beautiful covers. Again, he draws women beautifully. So, so yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, all right. And now we're talking about, you mentioned this earlier, Uncanny yep. X-Men 184. This is the first appearance of Forge. This is where we first see Forge. Um, but you also get... Nays, I think it's Nays, right? Maybe Nays. I don't. I'm not sure. Right, Nays, um, who will le later become the adversary. A twenty five dollars comic book. You probably could get this for a little less because Forge has never been one of those characters that people clamor for. You know what and I'm saying? A, yeah, and he's an interesting character. I mean, I always thought he was interesting. Mm -hmm. I agree. I, I I love his I loved his powers that you know he could read he he understands tech. In yeah. such a way that he could pretty much build whatever he wants. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to the life stories. I'm shocked that I don't see the life stories comics in the list, which I think yeah. that's interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Th I figured both of those should have been in the list, but I agree. All right, but it doesn't happen. So now we have another book here that, even though this is a Spider-Man book, this is still an X-Men spec. And, and it's that, interesting they're choosing this one. Well, no, they, well because the character that we see in the sh in the in the show, he may be the tri sentinel in the head, but he has the shape of a bug. Yeah, which is part of the E for Extinction storyline. So yeah. they're doing they're they're mashing it up. But this is the first time we see the tri sentinel, and he is as weird as it sounds. The tri sentinel is the Spider Man villain. Because yeah. all I see him is in Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, uh, this this particular issue was like the aftermath of Spider Man getting his cosmic powers and mm -hmm. Loki getting his butt kicked in Acts of Vengeance. So he he forms the Tri Sentinel just to piss everybody off. Yeah, and then the funny thing about this l later on, Spider Man's facing the Tri Sentinel again, and he somehow spray painted his face on one of the heads. Yeah. <laughs> so another another dollar bin book. This is Eric Larson goodness. This is my favorite period of Eric Larson, to be honest, when he when he was yeah. doing Spider-Man at this time because he had to follow. Eric Larson always had to follow Todd. <laughs> yeah. I, I want to point something out, too. One of my favorite panels is from this book because, you know, really? Shaw, Sebastian Shaw is, you know, he, he, he he's following behind in a helicopter. He sees the Tri-Sentinel. He gets on his radio, whatever, goes, are the Sentinels still in the lab? Well, sir, we had a problem. You're fired. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. all fired. <laughs> Isn't the adversary had a cool role in Echo miniseries two years ago? Oh, interesting. Oh, did. Okay, I didn't know that. I... Yeah. Didn't know that either. All right, another book here that's back on the list here. This one, this one I find a little interesting because it is Fantastic Four 244. This is the first appearance of Frankie Ray, who will become the Nova. And Hero of Galactus. So I guess this is taking from the Silver Surfer spec to it. I don't think yeah. this is this is the book that anybody should go crazy for anymore. I think the hype for this book is going to start dying down unless they decide to do something with Frankie Ray. Yeah. But if there's no Frankie Ray involved, this book is going to go That's, in this yeah, list. You're right. You're right. <laughs> so I will hold off. You know, I wouldn't pay forty dollars for this book though, right now. No. Now I think I think you're paying way too much for this book. But I will tell you one thing. <laughs> Let's have a kiss before you go, huh? 
I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, I gotta love the gambit. And speaking of gotta love, Mark is my boy. Circumstances is in the house. Uh, What's going on, my man? Right. So we got here Uncanny X Men one thirty four. This is where Jean Grey becomes Dark Phoenix. So uh, a very important part of the X Men lore. This is part of the Dark Phoenix saga. This is part six. This was long term storytelling. Oh yeah, at its best. Yeah, such a good story, man. I I like going back to it every so often. It's been a couple of years since I've read it, but I'm definitely gonna read it again because why not? I need Just... I need four issues to have the set. And oh really? I, ha- I have this one, of course. You know, two of the Hard. two of the ones I need are the two big the big, the big ones, right? Big ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dazzler and Kitty. Then I need the one with Wolvie by itself, and then there's another one. Well, oh, the one with the iconic cover that I always love. The 135. 135. Yeah, so this is an awesome book. Our next book is another book here that's just, it, you know what? People just want to pick it up. It, it's, awesome a cool, it's a cool cover. This is Todd McFarlane when he was doing Incredible Hulk. A lot of people talk about his Spider-Man run, but you know what? His Incredible Hulk run was iconic, too. He was, was drawn, He was doing great Hulk at the time, too. I was going to say, pardon the pun, but it was amazing. Yeah, it was. It was incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so this book is demanding forty dollars. I'm shocked that it's demanding forty. I would have figured it'd been a little lower. Yeah. Um, you probably should be able to pick this up at a lower price. Not it's not a dollar bin, of course, but you know, I will probably pay about twenty five for this book at most at a good run. Did we have Peter David still writing at this time? Peter David was writing it. He was writing yeah. he was writing Incredible Hulk for a while at that time. So yeah. definitely cool book. I'll check it out. Another cool book in this list. Captain America covers. Annual number eight. This is Mike Zach. This book is one of those books that got homaged a lot too for a while. Yeah. Um, but the lighting in this book is in crazy. Just just looking at the way they put they did lighting with color mm-hmm. in this book, I, I'm shocked to how good it looks. Yeah, uh, you know, my and Mike Zach is the, the man, but it does have a first appearance. Test one is the first appearance. Another oh, book, wow. 40, yeah, 40 dollars worth. I think you can get it for low, lower. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, it's a very iconic cover. Hell, I got a recreation of it on my wall. Oh yeah, cool. That's awesome. All right, our next book here is New X Men 114. This is the book that I was talking about earlier. This is the first appearance of. Sandra Nova. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, I think you're back. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was me for a second. No, it's 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 been me. So I told this story about the computer, right? Yeah. So I shipped it back. <laughs> yeah. So the computer has been shipped. They oh, they're overnighting it now. So it's not so much a lag. It's what, what's going on with the, the laptop I'm using now is that it's the storage is full and okay. I can't and I can't get rid of anything else. So everything that's in the laptop is like this is the max. So it's actually causing the lag here and it's causing internet connections and all that fun stuff. But hopefully we'll get back here. Uh back to New Mutant New Mutants, New X-Men 114, the first appearance of Cassandra Nova. This is also the book where starts the new X-Men. So this is the first new X-Men series. This is where Grant Morrison takes over as the writer with Frank Quitely or Quitely, whatever Taylor wants me to call him. Um, but it, it has been confirmed that Cassandra Nova will be part of Deadpool. But I think this book is getting hot because of what we just saw in episode five. Exactly. Right? So E for Extinction has the storyline of the destruction of Genosha, which was a big part of that story. So I'm um, I think they're marrying the two. Yeah. <laughs> Call him whatever. <laughs> You'll forget them. <laughs> 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 what's up, DBH? <laughs> Your partner in crime right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> last week last week I had him. Now I got you. So yeah, so this book is an important book in What's going on at X-Men 97? 
so major plot points with that one. So yeah. you got to check that one out. All right. On to the book of the hour. <laughs> yep. X-Men Adventures number one. This is the first appearance of Morph from the animated series. But he was also, he was based off of Chanley, if you remember. From, yeah. X -Men 30, from yeah. X Men 35. However, they had to change his name because of some other group from some other company. Ooh, yeah. You. Beast Boy. Yeah. So, $18 high for this book. I'm surprised it's not higher. Really? Yeah. I, uh, I'm surprised that, you know, give it, uh, I'm sure we're going to see it again before this is all over with. Yeah. The, the other thing about this book that I think is interesting is that because it was catered to children, right? Because yeah. this was this was the adaption for the cartoons. And back then, when an adaption to adaption to a uh, series would come out, most people didn't buy the book. So they had low print runs, and those that did buy it, they were not treated well. So I don't know how many books are out there of this title, but I don't think there's as many as... I know, you know at one I mean? point in time I had five copies and I gave four of them to some kids that wanted to read them. Oh, yeah? That's awesome. Yeah, so, <laughs> All right, what's going on? And you thought it was all being evil. <laughs> oh, Taylor's Taylor, man. All right, working on oh, X-Men Adventures, one of the first guys. That's awesome, Steven. Yeah. So you know what? Since we are talking about some X-Men, do you, you want to know what Gambit's thinking? You ever asked the question what he was thinking? All the time. All right. Well, let me show you what he thinks. I'm looking through your mind's eye. It's always room. <laughs> but you like how he, he Belladonna's in there. Yeah. He, he does think about Belladonna. That's his wife. For a second. <laughs> you, you know, so. <laughs> He's moved right. on. <laughs> He's moved on. Yeah, so did she, right? All yeah. right. Our next book in this list is, and I think this may be the last book in the list. Yep. Last book in the list is Batman Adventures, issue number 12, the first appearance of Harley Quinn in a comic book. Um, not in the DC universe, but in a comic book. Obviously, this is a blue chip book book this is a book that absolutely is 1.2k going for right now but this book is hot because of that joker trailer which yeah. we you know it's kind of we're not talking a lot about it since we've been on this x-men thing but have you seen the joker trailer yes and your thoughts i don't know yet <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, you're not ready i'm willing to give it a shot i mean I'm you're not ready for Oh, it's nothing against the actors or actresses that are in it. I just, the trailer really didn't do nothing for me. But, I mean, there, there's other trailers that's done that too. So, but I'm willing to give it a shot, you know. Well, what's your thoughts on it being a musical? Now, I didn't know about that until my brother told me about it. And, hell, I mean, mm -hmm. I've watched musicals before. So, we'll we'll see. Hell, man, I, I watch the Xena musical on repeat all the time. So, I mean. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, then check out who's in the house in Mortal Biggie Shack. What's going on, my man? The Big E. Big E. All right, so it, it, from my understanding, it's supposed to have like 12 to 13 songs. However, they're cover songs, so they're taking other songs. Obviously, I think they're going through a generational thing with the songs, and a lot of it's happening in his noggin yeah. and stuff like that, which was kind of the same case in the first movie. So my, what, what I'm curious about is if Harley is a figment of his imagination in this movie. It's possible. Right. So like, but it's, you know, the title of the movie is, oh man, I, I can't even. Yeah. I it, didn't. Joker fully did de deduce something like that, which means shared madness. But which, which is a clinical term in regards to two people sharing yeah. some kind of insanity, which Joker and Harley. Yeah. Perfect example. So. I'm looking forward to it. I enjoyed watching the first movie. The only thing I will say about the first movie is that I enjoyed it as a film. Yeah. And I felt like they threw the name Joker in just so that people could go watch it. 
Yeah. You get yeah, what I'm saying? I, oh, yeah. I, I enjoyed the first one, just like you said, as a film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, and, it, you know, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So. <laughs> so what what's this? Follow the dude. <laughs> I don't know what you're trying to say. Anyway, those are the t- those are the the books of the you know the trendy books of the week. A lot of good stuff there. Yeah, it, I, I had twelve of them. You got twelve <laughs> of those books. Awesome. So with that said, let's talk. Let's take a look at what are the top ten books over at CBCSI and cover price. So. You might see some familiar faces. There's a lot awesome. of gambit. Yeah. <laughs> but the number tra- one. There was yeah, Transformers in there too. There was Transformers number one. That was number three over at cover price, which is getting some momentum again. But what I noticed was the last Ronin number one on both lists. Yeah. Because there's there's word out that they're going to do a last Ronin live action. But even more interesting is that they're, they're talking about an R-rated last Ronin. That's going to be interesting, though. So, which I'm like, really? They're going to go there? You know, if they do it, yeah, more kudos to them, you know. But I don't know if we've ever asked for a R-rated Turtles movie. Maybe we didn't know we needed it. That is that is also true. Maybe we didn't. So who, who's to say, right? A yeah. um, lot of good stuff. Again, some Dave Stevens books there. Obviously, there's some X-Men stuff there. So, you know what? Let's go find out what happened to Gambit when he went to the rec room. Look like I keep you waiting too long. Or maybe you just want me to wake you up with a kiss. What in the world? Who sleeps like that? <laughs> I, I, I was going to say, that has got to be the most detailed couch I've ever seen. <laughs> this was a Saturday morning cartoon, mind you. Yeah. This, is what the, this is what the kids were watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, the kids were into this. Hey, Mom, know? I'm watching X-Men. <laughs> okay, is that a good show? All right. <laughs> But she gave him the kiss. He, he took it. So, <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, you ready? You ready to talk about what's coming out this week? Sure. Let's see what's coming out this week for Marvel, DC, and all that fun stuff. And let's check out the pull list. Okay, the pull list is up. So we got sixteen titles over at Marvel Comics. Whew. At least they, they used to do these 20, 20, 22 books. I like 16. Nice and simple. Don't go crazy. You know, starting with this book that I'm I'm just not certain what to think of it. And that's Roxxon Presents. Yeah. Thor, number one. I don't even know what this is about. I, I, I got nothing on it. Nothing. Corporate <laughs> Thor? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I guess. Who's to say? Right, it's just one of those weird things, right? So you got that one. You got Giant Size Hulk number one that's coming out this week. Ultimate Black Panther issue number three is out this week. So we get a nice little Killmonger cover. 
So that's there's a little spec there. You got his first ultimate kill monger in the cover. Um, also, you got Avengers Twilight issue number five. That's that book's been hot lately, so it's going to continue its trend. So you have that coming out this week. Also, you have Miles Morales Spider Man 19 out this week. Spectacular Spider Man number two, Spider Boy number five, and Fall of the House of X issue number four. Um, how are you feeling about all these Spider books? I have not reading any of them except for Ultimate Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, the last, it, it, it's a lot of Spidey, right? Yeah. So got that going on. Also, you got Dead X Men issue number four, Ghost Rider Final Vengeance issue number two. What if Venom? In this case, what if Venom was Doctor Strange? That's interesting. Um, yeah. Spider Woman issue number six as well. Black Widow Hawkeye issue number three, Captain Marvel issue number seven. Beware the Planet of the Apes, issue number four. And finally, Star Wars Mace Windu, number three. I'll be getting the Black Panther one, and I'm really interested in the Final Vengeance because I picked up the first issue mm -hmm. just because I liked the cover and I read the book. And I was, I was like, well, it kind of actually surprised me. It was actually really good. So, I mean, all right. Bro, I was 10 years old when I seen Flash Gordon. My folks right. said nothing about suggesting a dumb stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> just saying. All right. Next up on our list is DC Comics. We got 11 DC Comics this week. Among them, there's actually some pretty good books in this list. Starting with Batman, Superman, World's Finest. You got Batmite and Doctor. No, is it Mr. Mitzelplik? Oh. Right, so that's always that's always some fun frolicking going on. Uh, you said, "Uh oh," is right there in the title. Uh oh, no. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's going on. Nightwing one thirteen. Right, we got the House of Brainiac storyline continuing in Superman issue number thirteen. Obviously, there's a connecting cover with Action yeah. Comics. So you got that one. Green Lantern War Journal. The issue. Ah, oh. see. And that's what I'm here for, DVH. That's why we do this pull list to remind everyone what books are coming out this week. So you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to pass everything, right? What's going on the Dixon Way? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Keep, I'll keep doing my grind, Dixon Way. I, lo I love the title. I love the name. All right. So you got Greenland and War Journal issue number eight. That's a cool cover. It is a cool cover, right? It's such a. It's like the colors in the background. It looks really cool. I, I really like it. Right. Titans issue number ten. The book, pretty much the book right now that's that's killing it in DC is Wonder Woman. So issue number eight is coming out this week. Catwoman sixty four. Jay Garrett the Flash issue number six is also out this week. And I believe we we wrap it up with Batman Off World issue number four. John Constantine, Hellblazer, Dead in America, and Mad 37. Ooh. All these, these. Well, I was yeah. going to say, I didn't know if it came out this week or next week, but I know they're fixing to do the whole crisis thing again. Yeah, all the crisis. Always, yeah, this crisis is. Uh, I think they just need to let it go. They said I, something I, about Absolute DC. I know I heard something like that. Well, so. I'm, I'm probably going to buy all the full covers for Crisis because I'm doing it with Secret Wars right now. Yeah, and, and Joe would like to just say, "Welcome to the funeral and mourning of Gambit." <laughs> Welcome, Dixon. Yes, today we real. are. Today we are mourning the loss of Gambit. So please take an opportunity and show show your respect, because oh, you two make enough noise to wake the half dead. Gambit. You're okay. No thanks to you, Chef. You told Gambit a little kiss wouldn't hurt. No, I didn't. You snuck a kiss and got what was coming to you. Gambit don't never go where he's not invited. <laughs> yeah. What you know what cracks me up? How how she was like, Gambit, you're okay. And he's like, No thanks to you. It's like, you deserve that. You <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she just turned on him. <laughs> All right, and then let's go into Image Comics. Image has 10 titles this week. Over at Image, you got 
seven one seven four or seventy one seventy four AD, which is a book that's set in the far future. Um, interesting. Um, worth checking out if any if you guys are interested in indie titles. Cobra Commander issue number four is out this week. Spawn three hundred fifty two. Sam and Twitch case files issue number two is also out this week. I like that. I like that Saturday morning post cover right there. I think it's really cool. Norman looking. Norman Rockwell. Yeah, Norman Rockwell. Really cool. <laughs> also, Man. Moon Man number two. Right from what's yep. the name of that Kid Cuddy's comic? Kid Cuddy presents I'm, Moon Man. Don't get me lying to you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude, we, let's talk about Kid Cudi and all all the songs we love of him. I I, I, I don't even know, know anything about Kid Cudi. So, <laughs> Kill Your Darlings, issue number eight. Something Epic, number nine. Hack and Slash, Back to School, number four. And that's coming out for Image. Also, The Weathered Man, number four. And Walking Dead Deluxe, 87. What's your take on these Walking Dead Deluxe? Do you like Do you like that they're in color now? Well, I bought a few. I should have did what Durs did and bought them from the beginning, since I don't own any of the Walking Dead. Yeah, and I bought I bought the Michonne ones. I bought the one with the Governor. I'll probably be buying the issue one hundred when it comes out with Megan. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I've read like the first fifty or sixty issues, and I love it. Yeah, uh, I'm not much of uh, you know what. If a book came out in black and white and it came out in black and white on purpose, that's yeah. how I feel about it. You know what I mean? Um, I don't mind the color. Mm-hmm. I don't. But I feel like this is one of those series that probably will benefit as in the black and white. That probably exactly. would have been a cool thing they did if they did that in the TV series. Yeah, it would have been interesting. They would have gone there, but I'm I know why they would they didn't. So yeah. All right, over at our other indie books, you got Dark Horse with seven titles. Boom Studios has six. Dynamite has six as well. IDW with three. A Blaze is back this week with three titles, and Oni Press has two titles. So let's. Let's quickly go through these titles here, starting with Dark Horse. And as I said before, you see, they're still rolling out yeah. Star Wars books. So you got Star Wars The High Republic, Saber for Hire number one. This is the number one for Star Wars. So you might want to pick that one up, guys. Yeah. Um, that's that's a book you might be interested in. Also, you have Dutley Dots in the Forever Machine. That's from J- Jamal Igel and Scott Snyder. That's a book that people might be interested in. Yeah. Oh wait, wait! I got, I got something here. I had a friend that swears draw would destroy Superman, and I told him he's crazy. <laughs> what says you guys? Uh, I, I don't know much about Thrawn. Do you know anything about Thrawn? No. I would have to know a little bit more about Thrawn. I'm not familiar with that character. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. like how would you feel? Uh, I'll, I'll give you one that that most people have debated: Superman versus Hulk. Ooh. Depends on the Hulk. Okay. Old like school stat Hulk. I, if we're talking about the matter Hulk gets, the stronger Hulk gets. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, a, a pure brute force, I think the Hulk could take it. But if Superman could find a way to use that rage against him. Mm-hmm. But- well, Superman could use his rage against him. But in a moment where Superman is, I would say, distracted maybe. Yeah, Hulk could just punch him down to underneath the earth, and then no solar power. Hulk got him. Yeah. yeah. And of course, Done. if he if he uh, if he pulls a Spidey from ASM 328 and knocks Hulk into orbit. Yeah. <laughs> but look at this. You see, we got we got the debate. Superman wrecks Hulk. I agree. Superman beats Hulk easily. I don't know about easily. World Breaker Hulk is devastating. So. I'm down with that one. World Breaker. Taylor, Taylor's got the best one. It depends on the yeah. It always depends on the writer. All right. Stan Lee Superman, said that. Yep, and Superman will crush Hulk. <laughs> this is physics. <laughs> All right. See, I like how we have a nice little debate here. Um, Helen of Windhorn number two is out. That's from Tom King, and over by James Titans. You got Blue Book 1947 issue number three. Also from Dark Horse, you got Quick Spots Volume Two, Issue Number Four. Look at that cover! <laughs> what the hell, you know, you know that that's from right. Looks like Devil's Advocate. It's definitely Devil's Advocate. Yeah. So <laughs> you got the cow movies, right? It's movie? Yeah, movie the cash cow or movie the cow. Yeah. There you go, right there. 
All right, Assassin's Apprentice issue, Assassin's Apprentice two issue number five. All right. Oh, from from Invincible. I see what you're talking about. Yeah. Ooh, that is a good question. Hmm. Oh, yeah. All right, John Carpenter's Toxic Commando: Rise of Sludge God issue number two. That's interesting. Is that like his take on the Toxic Avenger? Um, he did no. It, it was a story he did years ago. So okay. It's, yeah. Uh we we found the winner. Thor Four Frog, frog yeah. wins. Nice, and we, a, go. we got Cole's comic claim. What's up, Cole? It's been a while, my man. Hashtag hot dog. Is is he friends with Matt or something? I mean, it must be. <laughs> More hot dogs like this comic. <laughs> Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I don't know if you're familiar with Grace Papaya hot dogs. I, I managed to go to Grace Papaya's hot dogs today. It's over at 72nd Street in Manhattan. I love those hot dogs. They're some of the best hot dogs from New York. So if you're ever in New York, graze papaya. Well, I've always told my wife, if I ever make it to New York, I'm going to have to have a hot dog. You got to get it from Grace papaya. They are the hot dogs. You know, a Nathan's hot dog if you go to Coney Island. Yeah. You know, that you got to go to Coney Island. But, right? Did you? T- I live in New York, man. Why am I going to take pictures? <laughs> <laughs> I think he wants a picture of the hot dog. <laughs> Maybe he does. Nice centerfold shot. <laughs> you can send it to him now. I don't know if you want a picture of a hot dog that I have right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait three days. Uh, next time. Okay, I make sure when I go back to Grace Papaya, I'll take a picture and I'll send it directly to you, Cole, man. All right, next up, Boom Studios. We have a new book called Blow Away. All right, oh, and then we got Lisa Noba. What's going on? Papaya Dog's best number one. Yep. You see? Papaya, Grace Papaya. I'm telling you, man. I'm not kidding. See? I mentioned Papaya's hot dogs, and Lisa Noble shows up. All right? Now everybody's talking about hot dogs. Oh. <laughs> Ken Burr said hot dog with a rat. You don't know how common <laughs> that really is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, from not, Atlanta? I was going to say, they're not always with pizza. Oh, look at this one. Taylor, 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 Taylor. No, 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 no. I bet you're going to say pizza's better in Chicago too, right? <laughs> Sorry, we win. And bagels. And, um, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. So blown away. Oh, there you go. Comics by the Bay's back. You had, yes, I had hot dogs for lunch today. I had two hot dogs mm-hmm. with, with coconut juice. Because that's great papayas. You got to get the drink to go along with it. So awesome. Blow Away number one comes out this week. Animal Pound three. The Displace issue number three. And I Heart Skull Crusher number two. Now, I Heart Skull Crusher number one had a special issue that came out and was hot. I'm not sure if issue number two is going to be the same thing. So I know right. nothing of these. Yeah. Um, wait up. We got, we got a. Can we discuss toppings? I will tell you right now, my hot dog is a plain Jane. Yep. Oh, wait. Deep dish isn't real pizza, but Chicago Tavern style is amazing. What has this stream become, Tony? I don't know. <laughs> this is what happens when Matt shows up, right? You know what I'm saying? Yep. Matt shows up, and it's all downhill from there with all the, the hot dog talk. All right. Oh, no, Matt brought it up. My wife's like, he brought it up. No, no, Matt brought it up. He's he's all about the wiener. That's that's his whole thing. That's his whole shtick. All right. And then we got Chris that shows up. Now he's with Red Onions. What's up, Chris? All right. Boom Studios lo- continues with Lotus Land issue number six and Under Heist issue number three. And and of course, let's blame. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, this is the Izzy verse edition of Food Wars. Hot dog versus burgers. What do you pick? Ooh, depends on the burger. Depends on the yeah. burger. Let's keep them plain Janes. It depends on the bur- uh, burger and the hot dog. Bro. You guys because... tell me, hot dog, burger. Your best hot dog versus the best burger you could think of. Well, I I don't really have a place where I can get them like off a cart or something, so I'm usually buying from the store, but I buy ballpark beef hot dogs. And... Oh, man, that's not hot dog. 
Yeah, I know. But I mean, that's all we got down here in the South. We don't have. But you got Oscar Mayer Wiener. You know what I'm saying? Well, Oscar Mayer. Yeah, we do have Oscar Mayer. Yeah. Uh, look at Burger Off the Grill. Yes, I admit Burger yeah, Off the Grill. Burger is Off amazing. the Grill. Fresh. And even Taylor. Look at Taylor's getting involved. Butter burgers for the win. Yeah. Burgers all day. Look at that. Yeah, I'm a burger guy. I love me a good burger. All right. I had much. Oh, look. Ah, oh, with tater tots and cottage cheese on the side. The cottage cheese, I'm not sure certain about what it goes with a burger. But if you say that's good, man, I'm okay. I like cottage cheese, but never thought about that. So Murder burger that. from a deli. What? Now oh. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> look, maybe some gator jerky, too. Well, now nah, I don't know about hey. that. You, you guys from the swamp, man. You know who else would probably be into that kind of stuff? Who? This this one guy I know. I think maybe you miss me, hey. I hate you. I don't understand this woman. Oh, I bet he's <laughs> made some mean seafood gumbo. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. So, all right, let's get going. We got over at Dynamite, you got your Disney books, Gargoyles Quest number one, and Darkwing Duck, Justice Ducks issue number two. That's a that's actually a really cool cover. Um, the yeah, dark it, oh, cover. it, it, I, for some weird reason, it kind of looks like a Jay Lee to me, you know? Yeah, yeah, it does. Uh, from the Bronx, Lisa, you're from the Bronx. Oh, you would be cool. Got him, got him, and shoot, 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 shoot him. Shoot him. <laughs> All right, over again, we got James Bond 007 issue number four, Army of Darkness Forever seven, Vampirella 668, Elvira Meet. HP Lovecraft issue number three. Those are your dynamite books. Also, you got from IDW Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Untold Destiny of the Foot Clan, issue number two. Also, Star Trek 19, Golothica, right? It's Goloth Golotha? Golotha? Golgotha Motor Mountain number two. <laughs> My Little Pony, Ken Pucky Roller Derby. Yep, I'll be picking up My Little Pony for my daughter, and I'm kind of iffy on the Turtles one because I picked up issue one, mm -hmm. and I just it was a cover by, and the story was yeah, it was all right. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Parkchester. Okay, cool. That's awesome. All right, we got a Blaze Comics with Almost Dead number two, The Prism seven, and The Agent number five. Also, you got Oni Press with Rick and Morning Final Week, um, Brawler. Brawl her. That's how it goes. Brawl her. Number one. And Jill and the Killers, number four. And we're not talking about the Killers, the band. Somebody told me that you had a boyfriend that looks like a girlfriend. Yeah, anyway. Um, and over by American Mythology Productions, you got the Three Stooges Centennial, number one. All right. I want, you know, that's interesting seeing the Three Stooges in the comic book format. I was going to say, st they're still selling Three Stooges, and they still ain't making no money off of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're gone now, all three yeah, of them. Yeah, they're gone now. But... All, right. all right. Bombshells and Tom Tom number four is also out this week. And we got Blood Moon Comics with Hum Baba number two. And which what I will say is the most freakiest cover I've seen in a long time, and that's Eddie, You Are What You Eat. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that 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 is crazy. <laughs> uh, Massive Comics has Assassin Creed: The Fall Number One, and over at uh, AW Upshot, you got U and I issue number three. Hmm. And we got here, and I think we're at the almost at the end of this list. Oh no, we're we're almost at the end. We're not there yet. Um, Zen Zeniscope Oz: Fall of Emerald City Number One, Spell Weaver Number Three over at Keen Spot. Mad Cave Studios with Love Me, a love a romance story. And Valiant is still pushing that bloodshot with Hell Bloodshot yeah. Unleashed Reloaded number two. And in our last list here, Titan Comics has Blade Runner 2039, issue number 12. Over at Udon Studios, it's Dark Stalkers, Jetta number one. And Volt Comics has Beyond Real number three. And of course, for some of you boys out there, or girls, depending on how you look at it, Penthouse Comics number two. So my wife was, I was, as I was setting up this list, my wife comes up, she tells me, Penthouse Comics. And I was like, um, it's just for this, it's just for the list. It's just for yeah. the list, honey. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, Hustler made comics too. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. 
and yes, Valiant still exists. They they've been throwing out some books here and there. It's just it's not a, it's not as consistent as it once was, but they're still throwing out books out there. So those are the books for this week. Tony, any good books that you're picking up? A few. Got a mm-hmm. few in there. Mostly independents. I'm kind of interested to see how that Sam and Twitch goes. Hopefully they'll fix the lettering and make theirs happy, which I doubt, I doubt, <laughs> they, will. I doubt they will. But I, I kind of agree with him on that. But, I mean, it didn't bother me as much as it bo- probably bothered him. But I like the story because yeah. I like those you- good murder mystery stuff. You see, he's in the chat. Durs, don't kill me now. <laughs> well, Durs is like, I got a good cover for that penthouse. I bet you do. I bet you that one comes poly bag too. Yep. <laughs> All right, you ready to? You want you want to give away something? Sure, let's give it away. Give it let's away. Give, let, let's give it away. But before we give it away, you need to remember one thing, guys. So let's get this thing here ready. And what we're going to do is because, again, because we're going to give the love to where the love deserves, we're going to make the hashtag just as so. And that's going to be, let's see here. Got to do a screen share first. Let's give Gambit some love, guys. All right. Hashtag Gambit. Nah, it's clean. I don't. <laughs> he doesn't enjoy new covers. Why are you getting when? Then why are you getting penthouse cover? Just throwing that out. I got a few Playboys up in the attic, but I don't have any uh, mm-hmm. comics. Like I don't have any nudity comics. Yeah, I, honestly, I don't pick. I don't pick any of that stuff up. So it's not my thing. But no. you know, if anything, the only thing closest to that would probably be like. Health, um, heavy metal magazine. Oh yeah, I remember. He- remember heavy metal. Heavy metal was awesome, man. It's. I think it's still out there. It's just not as prevalent as it once was. No. Yeah. All right, we're doing a X Men mystery box today. So everything you're gonna get, it that whoever wins is going to get a bunch of X Men goodies. They may not all be comic books. Mm. Hmm. And you might get a surprise too. Here. Oh, wow. He shows up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tyler. Great way. Get timing. <laughs> All right. We, we got here 12 entries out of 15. All right. Let's see here. Now we got 13 out of 15. So we'll give it a few more minutes here. So, Tony. Yes, sir. Overall opinion. How are you liking the X Men cartoon? Man, I, I, you know, I started watching it because I was a big fan of the old show, and it has really surprised me. I think the animation's a little bit better, mm-hmm. and the acting. I mean, I knew they would do stories based on some of the comics, but I didn't really realize how much uh, into the well they would go. Mm-hmm. And I really didn't expect that last episode, you know, to, it, to for them to go there, but it really yeah. floored me. So and, Bio de Mario, Bio, I think it's Bo de Mayo who is the who was the showrunner. He was the guy that got fired before the show started. Mm-hmm. He was mentioning, he did go online and he did say that this was the episode that he pitched. Yeah, and yeah, I remember that. He did also say that this was the turning point. So where episodes four, one through four, are really a nostalgic trip. Episodes five on is going to take us to a different route. So well, as, I'm curious to see where, where it's going to take us. As Jr. would say, business is about to pick up. Yeah. So yeah, business is about. Oh, Tyler, you've been here, but not you. So you've been lurking. He's been lurking. He's been lurking. All right. Anyway, we got here 13 entries out of 16. I think it's time to hit that drawing. I think Tony needs to win some X Men. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll get those books, right? <laughs> Las, Las Cruces. Cruces. There you go. Las Cruces, always the first one in and always getting the win. <laughs> Congratulations, Congrats, Las Cruces. You're gonna get you're gonna get a nice little nice little X-Men little package mystery box that I got there for you. So congratulations, my man. And yeah, when you when you say <laughs> Las Cruces wins. 
then Las Cruces wins, man. That's just how it works, man. All right. So with that said, look at that. what a legend. <laughs> Tony, where can people yeah. find you? You can find me on the Commonverse YouTube channel. And I show up on Instagram every now and then. Um, this Friday, I'm going to drop, finally, my episode of Tony's Comic Spotlight featuring Forever People number one. First full appearance of Dark Side and the Forever People. Mm-hmm. And then Saturday night, into the Commonverse, episode 29, we're going to be talking about our favorite cult films. Films that we really love that has achieved cult status that, you know, I'm going to bring some to the party that people may have heard of, people may mm-hmm. not have heard of. Or people may have just forgotten about how great they were. Yeah, yeah. If I if I'm available, I'll stop by for sure. Absolutely. You know, Saturday is always a rough day. But guys, just want to remind you, everybody, that we we are going to get the Monday night lineup right now. You got Scotty Vaughn. He's over with Thomas Hold. They're doing their show right there. Go ahead, check out Geek Out with Roscoe. He's going to have my boy Norrin Rad's going to be in the house. Twenty two Comics also is going to be talking about his top ten alternatives this week. And don't forget to check out couple comics with monday night raw book as well and you know what i'm dropping a video tomorrow so tomorrow right. for channel members these are x-men keys that i received they're not exactly all x-men books but they are all x-men related and they are all major keys one of them one of the batches of books i got i got from the comic viking allen so, and he knows what of course he knows what they are and when you guys see what it is you're gonna be like these are some bangers that's happening for channel members on Wednesday. I will be releasing the video um, during lunchtime. But if you're a channel member, you get to see the video early tomorrow. So go check that one out. Also, don't forget, support Comics Curing Cancer. Um, remember, cancer is the ultimate villain. Please take an opportunity to donate. If you can, donate what you can. Um, we're going to be doing some great stuff in the future with Comics Curing Cancer. We are go- also going to be part of the Heroes Convention Booth 1769 over at Heroes Con. I'm going to be there. Tony, are you going to get a chance to go out to Heroes Con? Not this year. Unfortunately, things beyond my control has kept me from being able to go this year. Mm-hmm. But That's how, it, that was me last year. It's my number one go for 2025 is to hit Heroes Con. I'll probably be bringing my wife and daughter with me. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, I want to meet everybody. That's my. It's yeah. the first time I'm going to go to a comic book con, a Comic Con and just go to meet people. Yeah, it's gonna be awesome. I know that much. So, go check that. Go go check it out. Go hit the the IG. It's at Comics Curing Cancer, um, DJ Links, Legion of Comics, and of course the head honcho Rob Fatstacks. All are doing a phenomenal job with Comics Curing Cancer. Um, that's it, man. That's all we got for you. With that, we're gonna lead you off with one special thank you that we have to give you. So. Guys, love you, and just want to say. Hey, uh, I, I think this is it. I think you're about to go home. Okay. Right. Um, look, I, uh, thank you. 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 Oh, thank you. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I never said thank you. And you'll never have to. I'll see you.